Throughout the book, The Seventh Sense, Joshua Cooper Ramo takes the reader on a journey across time to explore capital P power, nation states, global influence, militaristic innovation, humanistic discord, radicalized revelation, social deconstruction, national and global ineptitude, capitalistic invention, algorithmic reconstruction, all towards a potential goal to opportunistically harness the power of network connections and the possibility or promise of building a new world order. I have to admit that when I started reading The Seventh Sense, I was struggling with much of the content in the heteronormative framing of the writing and perspective. I'm easily put off by historic examples that frame or even qualify colonization, military power, and even capitalistic invention to frame my learning. I kept asking, where am I in this? Where are my people? As a painter, I work in slow media and seek human-to-human -human network interaction. Therefore, I am inherently mistrustful of networks that scale beyond human-to-human -human interaction. And yet I understand that this is the context for which we live, navigate, and have to transact. Yet after completing The Seventh Sense, I am simultaneously confounded at the complexity and the scale of networks that we are connected to, directly, indirectly, with or without our knowledge or intention, and further compelled to understand and critically examine how to mindfully align our values within these systems. Because whether we want to accept it or not, we are actors in this set of complex, braided networks, and we ultimately have incremental power as gatekeepers. This both-and position of gate-kept and gatekeeper feels to me like an inescapable position and therefore, if I accept this position, then how do I actively embrace and deconstruct my own power? And how do I embed my value for equity or even reparations within my networked influence? I want to believe our advanced connectedness can lead to a more engaged presence in our individual and collective ability to connect as humans, to share power, to reckon with our past atrocities, and to enact reparations. But how do we influence and not withhold? How do we achieve compassion, empathy, critical discourse, and ultimately transformative justice in a networked age? This to me feels like the moral dilemma of our time. Rammel posits that we are facing an eventual global collapse and construction, and we have not yet developed a strategic concept that reflects the pursuit of decency. Yet I would argue that decency is and always will be the pursuit of creative people the pursuit of artists, justice warriors, free radicals, and outsiders, because you cannot conceive of decency through wielding the tools of destruction.